Hi there, Tim with Madrona Labs. Welcome back to another installment of the Kaivo module overview series. Today we are going to be going over the LFO 2D, which you can see right here under my cursor. 2D stands for two dimensional, which is represented by our X and our Y outputs. And if you'll look at the viewer here within the LFO 2D module and I turn the rate all the way up, well, you can see we have a nice circle. We have a drop down menu here where we can go to infinity, a square shape, a triangle shape, Gaussian, which is kind of like a bell curve or sine wave, nights, this one's really fun, and then my personal favorite is rain. So let's go back to our triangle, and now we can see within the viewer this triangle shape. And you'll notice there's all these like grainy dots or sparks. So what these represent actually are the different control signals that are coming out of your X, Y outputs, but also these dots that are showing up within the viewer all represent one of the voices from the key module. Now we're up to eight. Now we see there are more control signals that will be appearing at the outputs over time. To really drive it home, think of it like this. We have our triangle shape in here and all these different dots have different values that change over time and that time is your rate. That's why when you turn it up really fast, it's very blinky and you can see that shape. Now notice when I click the quantize toggle to the off mode, the shape gets a lot smoother. That's because while in quantize mode, all of those values are being locked into whatever scale or mode you have selected in the key module. And what this means is you can use the X and Y outputs, not just for modulation sources, but you can use it in the melodic construction of your piece of music. All right, let's see the X and Y outputs in action and then talk about these offsets. This is the Y offset here, the slider that I'm moving, and then this is the X offset. So first up, I'm gonna go down here to the granulator. I'm gonna unclick wrap. I'm gonna go up to oscillators and pick the four harmonics. So as you can see down here, we have our waveform and all of these different flashing lights here are basically what you can think of as playheads are playing from that sample. So if I move the Y slider up, you can start to see I'm hitting those harmonics up in the upper part of the waveform and then the X axis moves that back and forth. So if I set these here, uh, both in the center, and then I take my Y output from the LFO 2D and put it into the Y input for the granulator. Now let's take the Y output and put it into the Y input and do the same thing. So now I'm using the LFO 2D to change where we're getting our grains from and our waveform down here in the granulator. Next up, we have these offset sliders on the X and Y axes. And what these do is allow you to control where in X, Y space your control signals are. Next up, we have our offset dial. This is different than the offsets that we just talked about here on the X and Y axes. And what this does is adjusts the space in between the different control signals coming out of the LFO 2D. And here's kind of a fun way to help wrap your head around it. Let's turn our rate all the way back up. Now we see this triangle shape. Let's imagine that this triangle shape is a racetrack and each one of these sparks or dots is a different car on that racetrack. What the offset is going to do is change the distance between each control signal from each other. These are fixed differences. So if you have a car that's following like this, as you adjust the offset, that distance between the cars will spread out. 
And what's really cool about the offset here is if you are using a multi-voice, you know, here I have four voices coming from my key, and then you use some of these key outputs to modulate the offset, each voice is going to actually have a different control signal being sent into the offset. Okay, let's talk about the reset input. So the X and Y outputs each have their own little pieces of data, these control voltages that get sent out of their outputs. And depending on what shape you have, you have a different starting and ending and restarting position for the X and Y. So with the infinity, you know, it makes the full shape and then it starts over. What the reset input does is starts the X and Y outputs of the LFO 2D back to their starting position of whatever the shape you have chosen. So for instance, if they're halfway through making that infinity shape and the reset is triggered, then those points go back to the beginning of the infinity shape. So what I'm gonna do is get a sequence going in our sequencer, and then I'm going to use one of the trigger outputs to reset the LFO2D. The rate dial does exactly what it sounds like it would do. It controls the rate of the LFO 2D, more specifically the rate of change of position of each control signal within the X and Y space. So I'm using the Keith McMillan Keyboard 4 here. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna put the aftertouch into my offset input and then my Y output into my rate. Now notice the harder I press here, you can see I am modulating my offset and then now I'm going to modulate the rate as I slide my finger up on the controller there. That's the X output. So you can get some really fun dynamic playing with your aftertouch and your Y outputs when using an MPE controller. So I want to talk about a couple of the shapes within the LFO 2D. Knights is an 8x8 grid, and each step that a dot takes on the grid is like a knight's jump in chess. Two squares, one away, and then one square at a 90 degree angle from the first way. The tour of the chessboard made with all the knight's moves is called a knight's tour, and this is the shape of the knight's tour. And this particular shape is very good for making interesting melodies, so why don't we take a look at that? So the next shape I want to talk about is the rain. What is happening here is each dot is slowly falling from the top to the bottom of the screen in a long repeating pattern. So if you look at the dots on the Y axis, as those start from the top and fall, those are going from higher to lower values for the Y output. And then as they appear from left to right on the horizontal axis, they go from low to high from the X output. All right, thank you so much for watching our LFO 2D overview. For more information on Kaivo and all the other great synths from Madrona Labs, please check out the link in the video description. And we'll see you sooner than later with a demo of the noise module. Until next time.